This is Paranormal Skeptic Academy Using critical thinking and scientific evidence To analyze your favorite ghost hunting shows You'll never view them the same again You have been warned <laughs> Back in episode 32 of this very podcast I reviewed In Search Of, the ghost episode. And in that episode, we were introduced to paranormal investigator Hans Holzer. I promised I would do an episode on Hans, and here it is, in this Paranormal Skeptic Academy short. Hans Holzer was a prolific writer with over 140 books to his name. Now, when it comes to the paranormal, quantity doesn't actually equal quality. Topics of these books range from ghosts, the afterlife, witchcraft, aliens, psychics, and everything in between. The book that launched his career was simply titled Ghost Hunter and was released in 1963. In this book, He presents some of his case studies of hauntings around the New York area and has everything from Civil War era spirits to tormented ghosts of murder victims. This is the birth of modern day ghost hunting and Holzer is the father. Here's an excerpt from the introduction of that book. I'm a professional investigator of ghosts, haunted houses, and other spontaneous phenomena, to use the scientific term, that is, Anything of supernormal nature, not fully explained by orthodox happenings, and thus fallen into the realm of parapsychology or psychic research. Holzer believed in the power of psychics. He would bring psychics on his investigation, such as Ethel Johnson Meyer, Sybil Leake, and Marissa Anderson. He claimed to have coined the term ghost hunter, but a book by Harry Price titled Confessions of a Ghost Hunter was published in 1936. He is also said to be credited with coining the term the other side, but that term has been in use since the 19th century spiritualist movement. His investigative technique was simple. He would use a reel-to-reel recorder, a sensitive camera, and a psychic. He believed in the afterlife and described it as being similar to our world. He also believed that most ghosts were the result of traumatic circumstances and that ghosts were simply stuck between sides. He saw his mission as helping these trapped souls move on and never saw ghosts as something to be afraid of. From his book, An Introduction to Ghost. To fully understand the existence of ghosts, one needs to come to grips with the nature of life and death, ghost apparitions, messages from beyond, and psychic experiences involving a loved one or friends who have passed away all presuppose that the receiver or observer accept the reality of another dimension into which we all pass at one time or another. This line of reasoning is often used with believers in the paranormal. You have to presuppose the existence of some kind of afterlife in order to accept the reality of ghost. Now, I'm of the mind that you must provide evidence of the afterlife without using ghost as proof because we have to prove ghosts exist in the first place. Holzer firmly believed this and it shows up in all of his writings. He is a firm believer in the afterlife from the same book, An Introduction to Ghost. Except the skeptic, the evidence of this is overwhelming. For the skeptic, all of this will always be unacceptable, no matter how concrete the grounds for believing. This is another argument often used by believers in the paranormal. Skeptics have closed minds and don't accept the evidence of the paranormal. This is the furthest thing from the truth. Skeptics just have a higher standard for evidence. Holzer, throughout his career, often took any third-hand account as proof. Granted, he did have his skeptical moments, but even in the face of lack of concrete evidence, he still held to his position. Joe Nickel relates the dubious terms used in these ghost books. The authors use terms such as, it is said to be, and some believe that. However, 
Hans is different than most. Instead of relying on storytelling or relaying stories, he goes a step further and actually claims contact with the spirit realm, something straight out of the spiritualist movement. This is evident in his use of alleged psychics. Joe Nickel exposes his credulity. In his book, America's Haunted Houses, he relates his investigation of Ringwood Manor in northern New Jersey. Holzer arrived at Ringwood with psychic Ethel Myers in tow, a dubious choice given her involvement in the Amityville horror case, wherein she failed to realize it was a hoax. She supposedly made contact with former servants of Ringwood, saying that one, Jeremiah, had complained bitterly about his mistress, a Mrs. Erskine. However, the curator of Ringwood told me he doubted the house was haunted and disparaged the notion that Mrs. Erskine mistreated any servant, whether Jeremiah or not. He observed that the present house was never seen by her, and it isn't even near the location of the original house. Thus, when Holzer writes, quote, the center of the haunting seems to be what was once the area of Mrs. Erskine's bedroom, end quote. He betrays an utter lack of historical credibility. In this account, Holzer gets everything wrong, but peddles it as legit in his book. Now, you may have noticed Joe Nickel mention the Amityville horror case. It is without question that this case was a hoax. The Amityville horror case was made famous by Ed and Lorraine Warren in 1975. Not missing a chance to cash in, Holzer and his favorite psychic, Ethel Myers, investigated the site in 1977. In January 1977, Holzer and spiritual medium Ethel Myers entered 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York. Myers claimed that the house has been built over an ancient Native American burial ground, and the angry spirit of a Shinnecock Indian chief, Rolling Thunder, has possessed the previous occupant, Ronald DeFaro Jr., driving him to murder his family. Holzer's claim that the house was built on Indian sacred land was, however, denied by the local Amityville Historical Society, and it was pointed out that it was the Montaquette Indians, and not the Shinnecocks who had been the original settlers in the area. However, Indian burial sites have been found all over Long Island, including Amityville, so no one has been able to confirm or deny the burial of an Indian chief on or near the 112 Ocean Avenue property. Holzer went on to write several books on this one case. However, once again, he fails to provide accurate information and his psychic completely misses on her claims. There are so many examples of this, it would turn this short into a multi-part series. Holzer lived an interesting life. Born and raised in Vienna, Austria, he left for New York in 1938 before the Nazi takeover. He studied Japanese at Columbia University and earned a master's degree in comparative religion and a doctorate in parapsychology from the London College of Applied Science. He also taught parapsychology at the New York Institute of Technology and he was a Wiccan high priest. Holzer died on April 29, 2009, at the age of 89. One more thing before we go. From a New York Times article at the time of his death, they say, Mr. Holzer called himself, quote, a scientific investigator of the paranormal, end quote. He disliked the word, quote, supernatural, since it implied phenomena beyond the reach of science. He did not believe in the word belief, which suggests an irrational adherence to ideas not supported by fact. Nevertheless, he held in contempt electronic gadgetry for detecting cold spots, magnetic anomalies, and the like, preferring direct communication through a medium. One could forgive Mr. Holzer if he lived in the pre-scientific age, but he didn't. He lived in modern times with the scientific method firmly established. And yet, he still held on to the idea that psychic mediums communicated with the dead. He said some things I can agree with, but a lot of things that I don't. Hans Holzer influenced generations of paranormal investigators, and not for the good. Maybe, in another life, Holzer could have been another Joe Nickel. And maybe, one day, he'll have that chance, because he also believed in reincarnation.
This has been Paranormal Skeptic Academy Shorts. If you like what I do, head on over to patreon.com slash PSA. And for as little as $2 an episode, you can help support my efforts. Each patron will receive the video version of the normal episodes, along with a special RSS feed to add to your favorite podcatcher. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at CWeb619. Send me feedback at paranormalskepticacademy at gmail.com. Like the Facebook page and leave me a review on iTunes and Stitcher. This has been Paranormal Skeptic Academy, schooling your favorite ghost hunters.